Hey guys, Starcat here, and we decided to level the Ignite Firebrand starter that I recommend to people. Since I was progressing so quickly on my Cold Snap character, 92, with like nearly maxed out um, Atlas by day 3, and people wanted a lot of help with this build, I figured I'd make it to give you guys some help. Uh, we leveled the entire character to 77 today. My slash played is... 10 hours, so that's decent-ish. Uh, really enjoy it. Absolutely love it. Now, the highest map I've run uh, so far has been a tier 3. But since people were curious about the damage, I thought let's just jump straight into a tier 12 at level 77 with Monster Life. Because that seems fair. I don't know whether this will work or not. Hopefully it does work and then I can talk about the build. If not, then I'll have to log on to another character to clear it. But let's just see how it kind of goes. So, uh, there are two main ways of playing Armageddon Brand. Dot based or hit based. This is a dot-based character, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Now, I'm also supplementing my uh, brand damage with Scorching Ray Totem. I have got two six links. Um, I was very lucky to get a six link from a Dapper Prodigy card that you would have seen from one of my previous videos. And then I randomly had a, a Searing Touch drop, and I was like, huh. That'd be like an okay starter weapon if I uh, ended up playing my Ignite build. Let's just throw a couple of fuse into it. And it's six linked in like 40 fuse. So it was like, okay, that's uh, that's pretty good. So yeah, uh, <laughs> we're, we're slightly geared. So your starter may not have the same gear as my starter. Uh, but yeah, so for boss, we press everything, drop a bunch of totems. And that's with Monster Life. That was pretty clean. I don't know. Yeah, I think the build does damage. Granted, I am using uh, two Six Links, but I'm using a Trickster Ascendancy rather than an Elementalist Ascendancy. And everyone was telling me, but Taki, you know, you can't do any damage with Trickster because you have to play Elementalist. Rise QT, by the way. But I don't know. I think that Trickster's really nice. And I think that Trickster's got pretty good survivability because it's got really nice sustain. And it stacks really well with everything. And all the car suite just makes it a super fluid playstyle. Where you just kind of dance around the map. Uh, dropping brands and recalling them to yourself. And for anyone who hasn't played brands yet. And you're like, okay, but like, how do brands work? Um, well, basically exactly that. So you drop the two brands. You recall them. And then they teleport to your location. Okay. But I'm dancing around a lot more than I normally would because I'm a low level character and I haven't picked up all my life nodes yet. We just got up to Scion Life and we have the entire wheel completely empty. Uh, so yeah, we need to take all of that. I'll show skill tree and gear after this map. But uh, it's a really fun, really fluid um, playstyle with a lot of buttons. The same kind of reasons why I liked the Vortex Cold Snap character is you feel like you're playing WoW. It's got a real rotation to it. But yeah, as you can see, we're kind of missing all of this. So, um, this is the skill tree that I've gone for. The finished, finished skill tree with the Ignite setup would look uh, kind of like this is like your level 90 tree. And then your level 100 tree. Uh, yeah, I know, level 100, by the way, would be that if you're using a staff. And if you're not using a staff, you'd obviously drop that stuff. The whole staff thing, to be honest, I'd rather just use uh, the two Phoenix Swords, which give you uh, life when you ignite an enemy and use Whirling Blades. But I can't get it to drop, but I just aren't any in my league yet, so I'm using a staff. But I don't think you need to use a staff, but anyway. So, um, a few important things to note looking at this tree. I do not take this node. Why don't I take Rune Binder? Um, because I'm an Ignite build, and I don't stack multiple Ignites, and I use deadly ailments in my setup. So like, I don't do any like upfront damage. I'm doing only ignite damage. I don't need more than one brand on the enemy them at once, right? And this also gives me minus one summon totems. And I currently have three totems uh, to help like burn down the boss. So yeah. Now you could actually do this as a hierophant since I'm doing this very synergistic totem brand combo playstyle. I also haven't got my Uber lab yet, so I'm missing 50% uh, more damage. I'm actually missing like a lot. I don't. Okay, I know I'm using a six link, right? Like I'm using like gear, but I don't get why people don't think this does damage. But any anyway, right? 
<laughs> we're missing a lot for this character to really like come together. Um, my links, I have Armageddon Brand, Ignite Proliferation, Deadly Ailments, Combustion, Swift Affliction, Burning Damage. Um, if I was to drop a link, I would drop Swift Affliction, that would be my 5 link. Uh, for the Scorching Ray, which isn't needed, and you could also use a Balefire. Um, Balefire is what I'd recommend. I would say uh, Balefire plus a good shield, and that would be Scorching Ray, uh, Spell Totem, Multi Totem. Uh, the math will be pretty close between a six link and a bale fire, like basically the same. Uh, the only real reason I went for this is this is the only other six link I had uh, with the right colors for my Armageddon brand, and it just didn't have enough resists. And this chest has crazy resists. Uh, this I hit in one essence, so very lucky there. Uh, Malachi's Artifice Ring, very important. I have a Orb of Storms in there. This gives me EE, so it shreds enemy resists by 50%. Very strong. In the Helm, I'm using Rim Noir's Resolve. You have a few different options for the Helm. I was using the Gulf for a while, but I found I was actually clearing too quickly to pick up the Shrines. Um, and because it gives me Chill and Freeze Immune, I get to use two unique flasks. So I'm using a Blood of the Karui, because uh, it's like my favorite healing flask in the game. And I'm using Cinder Swallow Urn, uh, which is a new silver flask, which gives you mini tricks on a bottle. So I get even more life and mana recovery. I'm just stacking all that mana recovery and life recovery. It also gives me 10% uh, more damage by enemies I ignite, and it recharges whenever I consume a corpse. I'm consuming corpses through bubonic trails. Uh, my jewels are just life and resists. Life and resists and stats. And life and some stats so yeah i haven't got any like crazy damage jewels so that kind of makes up for the damage from the bubonic and the rim noirs my amulet uh is just resist the tempsent spell damage doesn't actually do anything for my armageddon brand because i'm scaling ignite although it does help my scorching ray and then this is just life mana resists and this is just has a bunch of resists on it um for movement i'm using just a just flame dash and it feels pretty good, like the cooldown is pretty quick. I do also have a Consecrated Path, um, which if I go to like Blood Aqueducts, I can show you how quickly you move with uh, Consecrated Path. I'm not used to weaving it in between like my Flame Dashes, but you could just like Consecrated Path through everything if you wanted to. Like it's pretty, pretty good. And this is with a weapon with no attack speed. Um, if you did want to commit to the uh, like staff play style, I would recommend trying to get like Essence of Insanity gloves and um, actually having an attack speed craft on your staff. But you can see it's like pretty decent without it, just because you get so much attack speed from Trickster, so you can kind of like make it work. Oh, humility, sick. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think Trickster Ignite is pretty legit. Obviously, this isn't a completely finished guide. This is what I'm kind of going for so far. If I do decide to drop the whole um, Ignite package, if I want to just go straight up front, um, then I would drop these points, these points. I would drop these points. And then I would do one of a couple of things. Um... I would either um, drop this back section, well, I'll definitely take that, or I'd go like full minion scaling, uh, get all the crazy minion nodes, get minion nodes, boom, 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 grab a life here, and then whatever, but I'd probably do like minion shenanigans and then try and get like really dirty uh, minion uh, delve weapons with a bunch of fire damage stacked on top. You've got quite a few different options of how you do this. You could also drop a mom completely. Um, if you drop the mom completely, good reservations would be Aspect of the Spider, Herald of Ash, Blasphemies, none of which I was using in this video, by the way. Um, Aspect of the Spider would be another way to scale or damage if you felt like you needed it. And Herald of Ash, while it wouldn't really boost your map play that much, it would help your Scorching Ray. And... Uh, I really love the Mystic MTX, so thank you again, Bex, for giving me my free stream of boxes. Uh, however, this is mostly actually the Harpy set. This is Harpy, uh, one of the old best, right, best league in the game, by the way. Supporter packs, cloak, gloves, boots, then with Mystic, helm, chest, and staff, with actually no character effects or aura effects, and also Mystic footprints, and uh, some pets.
Am I math all now? Like, you have to end every video talking about the MTX to fill out the 10 minute timer, right? I think that's how this stuff kind of works. But anyway, if you guys have had any cool ideas when it comes to playing um, Armageddon brands and all that good stuff, then let me know. Have a good day. Bye bye.